Hey, this is Mandy from Creative Matters coming to you from Auckland, New Zealand, in my garden. And today we are responding to the work of Andy Walton. So make sure before you watch this video that you see, you can click on the link that I've, I've attached to this video, and you can watch all the ideas around his practice. And you actually see this beautiful video of him exploring the forest and making some decisions about the kind of work that he's going to create. So the work that he does is environmental art. That means that it's art that takes place outside in the environment and he's responding to stuff that he can see and then he's um, making decisions about how he can enhance that thing of nature that's already there or uh, add to it or modify it slightly. Maybe he's looking at it, shapes that are already there or textures or spaces and then he's adding and enhancing that. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you don't have a garden, um, I'll give you some ideas later on for things that you could do instead. But if you have a space that you can go out to, even near the beach or at the local park, you can go there and try it as well. So today we're going to just walk through my garden and I've made a few little art, environmental art projects that you can have a look at and we can talk about. And then um, after the video, you can go away and try your own. Okay, so let's go. This one here is uh, looking at this beautiful plant which is very rubbery texture and it's got some beautiful spaces in between, almost like it's sort of fingers holding things. And so I like the idea of taking something that is very, very fragile and soft and almost fluffy and placing it in a little sort of bunch inside those little hands almost. And so we're really thinking about contrast, contrast of colour, contrast of texture and then sort of just adding just a little bit to this beautiful bush and then what Andy Goldsworthy does is he takes photographs of his beautiful work because as you can imagine if it starts to get windy or it rains tonight that might end up going and it won't be here tomorrow so we like to take photographs to keep the work okay so that's one idea follow me for the next one All right, so we've got this little log here that's actually dead and um, it's about to be cut up for firewood. And I like the idea of the sort of length and the line that's already here in this log. And so I'm going to kind of add to that idea of line. So I'm taking some flowers that I found somewhere else in the garden and I've created a, li created a line of flowers that kind of accentuates the line of this tree trunk. And I like the idea too that these are living and fresh and colourful and then they're contrasting really beautifully with the with the dead log. Hello Maz! Hello Mazzy! The colour the color of the, um, the flowers is contrasting with this lovely sort of dead non-coloured object. Also the softness of the flowers in contrast with the sort of solidness of these of this um, of this tree and then when you photograph it it's nice to kind of try looking through your phone or your camera at different angles so you might like to get down really low and get an interesting angle from that or you might decide to come around the other side and do something from this angle which is seeing the back of the photo the flowers which could be interesting as well okay on to the next one come on Matthew. All right, so this is just really looking at the uh, shape of the bottom of this tree. So this is a beautiful cabbage tree, New Zealand cabbage tree. And I've just taken some little allison flowers, which are very delicate and um, fragile. And I've just taken that shape of the bottom of the trunk and basically enhanced it with the beautiful flowers. Very simple, but really beautiful. And again, the way you take the photograph is the thing that makes the interesting artwork. Okay. This one over here is actually quite camouflaged. And this is in a Monstera plant, which is a beautiful tropical plant that can be found in the North Island of New Zealand. And it's got that sort of juicy, succulent leaf that we saw before. 
and I've taken each of these little petals and placed them up the stem. So I'm taking that line that's already there and adding to it. And I love the idea that there's lots of spaces in this one, in this leaf. And so it's almost like we're taking something out of that space and placing it. And then I thought about how I'm placing my petals. They all go upside down and they kind of go one way and then the other way, upside down, alternating, which just sort of adds a little bit of interest. Very simple again, but just kind of adding something. And when you walk away, it just looks so beautiful. And then when you come to take photographs, you can come in super close and show the space or the, the hole in the leaf with this beautiful succulent sort of juicy yummy textured stuff up the middle or you can sort of come further away and get a different kind of shot. All right on we go. Come on Ed. Sorry, but I don't slip. Whoa. <laughs> All right, now we're back down here with the black taro, which is amazing at the moment. And it's super high, if you have a look across the sea of black taro, it's looking beautiful. It's just the perfect season for that. And then I've just taken something, a flower from another plant and placed it in here. So if you just come around here, George, you can see that all I'm doing there is just placing something in this space. Like that. And then it's actually a beautiful shot because the light's coming in through that back of the petal making it really glow like it's its own special light and then we've got the lovely colors and textures and lines inside this beautiful leaf or you could take this space here and put something in it nobody would know that there was an actual hole there but you you know and you're responding to something that's naturally there which is quite cool also the lovely contrast and colors look beautiful or you could just take a few flowers and sort of put them in the little nestled spot here on that black taro leaf. Hey everyone, it's Mandy again. I'm sorry we had a little situation with the end of our video. So I just wanted to come back to you today to um, kind of finish off that activity and let you know what you can do with it. So um, basically all you need to do now is go into an outdoor space somewhere. So it may be in your garden, it might be in a park down the road, uh, might be in, you know, by the beach that's in your neighbourhood. Just a place that you that you feel comfortable. Even if you just have a little bit of grass um, and some some trees with leaves, you can still create something really beautiful. So you might be inspired by the mandala kind of idea, where you have a sort of circular um, concept, where you start with something in the middle, and then maybe you could work your way out and keep working your way out and just building and building, adding little pieces in between. So you could do something like that just on the grass if you wanted to. Or like I did, you could respond to something that's in this space already. Um, the main thing, as I said earlier, is that you take some great photos of your work. So use this, this um, activity as a way to explore photography as well and get some great skills with photography. So you might um, be looking at things really close up, standing further back and getting an idea of a different sort of angle for your photograph. And that would create really beautiful artworks of the work that you've done in your outdoor space. Um, you'll see after this video that there are some still photographs that I've taken of the work that I made in my garden. Um, so you might like to have a look at that. 
And make sure you've also seen Andy Goldsworth these um, videos and you could Google some of his work as well. Um, and that would be really interesting for you to, to learn about that just to help you in what you're creating. Okay, have fun everybody. I can't wait to see the photos. Thanks for joining us. Bye.